Hello animators! Before you start your project, it's always better to take a look at your project settings. Also after you finish making your animation, it's good to change some of the settings in project settings window to make your final result look better. In this video, we'll go through every one of its options to see what they do. Also if you're wondering how you can create a cube in Moho or how you can render your project in 3D format, we're gonna cover them as well. So let's not waste time and jump into the software. Here I have three layers, star, magic ball, and background. My background is actually a rectangle as you can see. Let me reset my view. To open project settings, you have to go to file and then click on project settings. First, let me talk about this section, which is called dimensions. This is where you can type the values for your width, and height of your project. The numbers that you type here are based on pixels. And as you can see, we have some presets here and this preset by default is selected. Rather than all of these presets that we have here, we also have a custom option. The thing is, there is no need to select it manually. As soon as you change one of these two values, Moho will change your preset to custom. See? Also, there is a check here called constraint proportions and we use it to keep the same proportion as before. So when you check this, every time you change one of these two values, the other one will be changed as well. For example, if I type 720, the other value will be changed to 1280. And every time I change this one, Moho then changes the other one to keep the proportions as same as before. If I uncheck this option and change one of these two, the other one won't change. So when you want to change the proportions of your project, you can uncheck this option. Now let's talk about the presets. The first section presets have the dimensions of old televisions. The dimensions in the second section give the vibe of newer televisions or the movies that we see in movie theaters. And the last section presets are the dimensions that we use in our videos to upload them on the internet. Now let's talk about the first section. In the past, different televisions had different dimensions. Until in 1941, the NTSC standard was created in the US. NTSC stands for National Television System Committee. The purpose to create this standard was that they wanted their TVs to play the images with the same aspect ratio. I mean the ratio of its width to its height, and also the same frame rate, which was 29.97 for NTSC. Frame rate means the number of images that your animation plays in every second, so you can have the illusion of movements. And when it's 29.97, you can multiply it by 100, which then becomes 2997 frames per 100 seconds. After NTSC standard was created, in the past, still some televisions were different, so we had different types of NTSC televisions. Some of them were wider, while others looked like a square. And that's why we have two options here for NTSC. Although Moho considers the width and the height here, choosing these two presets doesn't change your frame rate. And the frame rate for all of the presets in Moho are 24. After creating NTSC, since the electricity in every country worked different from the other ones, when some countries tried to use that, they realized that because of the frame rate being 29.97, when they tried to shoot a video with this frame rate, there was this flickering problem that showed up, and to solve it, they changed the frame rate to 25 and created their own standard for broadcasting called PAL. It stands for Phase Alternating Line. PAL had a higher resolution, but the frame rate was lower. On the other hand, NTSC had a lower resolution, but higher frame rate. Anyway, today the resolution of televisions are not NTSC or PAL. But you know, sometimes you want to give your audience that old school vibe. That's why we have these dimensions here. And also, I want to repeat this sentence again. In Moho, the presets are all about the dimensions and the frame rate of them is always 24. Then we have some new dimensions for newer television. The 480p is a small one. You can use it when the resolution of your final project is Full HD or 4K 
but you want to quickly render your project just to test it or you can use it to increase the speed of your render when you're practicing something in Maho and need a quick render. We use 720p and 1080p to render our final project. In fact, 1080p and 4K are more popular and today 4K televisions are replaced with 1080p ones. Although if the device that you use to play your animation doesn't support 4K, then it doesn't matter which one you use, 4K or 1080p. Both will be the same in a TV with the resolution of 1080p. And then we have digital cinema, which can be used to play your animation on the cinema screen. I hope that one day you guys use it for real. One thing about the last section is that some of the dimensions of the last section are just like the previous ones. So they're not actually different. For example, these two are actually these two. There is literally no difference between these presets. Okay, let's talk about the first one, VGA. VGA is commonly found in older computer monitors and televisions. Then we have two presets for web, which are some old dimensions used to upload a video on the internet. Some of them looked like a square and some of them were wider. Then we have an old YouTube preset. And these last ones are the new ones that are YouTube friendly. So if you've planned to upload your video on YouTube, choosing one of these two should be good but the last one is more common. Then we have frame rate, which is actually the number of frames per second. Right now it's 24, which means that we're gonna see 24 frames every second. This is an animation that I rendered in 24 frames per second. Nowadays we usually use 30 frames per second, but if you want your animation to look cartoonish, this is the right frame rate. And if we change it to 30, here, I rendered the previous animation in 30 frames per second. As you can see, compared to 24 FPS, it looks smoother and more real. And then we have a start frame and end frame. Let me click on OK. Every time I press spacebar or click on here to play my animation, Moho will start to play my animation from the start frame. And when it reaches the end frame, which is going to be there, it's going to repeat my animation from the start frame again. See? As you can see, all of the frames between your start frame and your end frame are highlighted. And the thing is, you can change it using a shortcut. This shortcut is Alt, and if I hold down the Alt key, and for example, click on the frame 12, my start frame will be 12. And if I hold down the Alt key and use right click, I can set my end frame, which is now 42. So now if I click on File, and choose project setting, you can see that these two are now 12 and 42. I'm gonna click on here to reset all of them and click on OK. And then everything will go back to normal. Instead of going to file and choosing project settings, you can use Control Shift P. Let me select it. Then we have background color. You're gonna see this color at the back of all of your layers. So let me click on OK. And because I already have a background layer, I can click on here to hide it. And now if I hold down the control and press R in my render, I'm going to see the background color. One important thing is that if you render this project in PNG format, because PNG images are transparent, you're not going to see this color in your render. So let me close this and go to file and choose export animation. Now from here, if the format of your output is video, after you render your project, you're going to see your background color at the back of all of your layers. Let me click on cancel and hit Ctrl Shift P to open my project settings and change this color to red and click on OK. And then I hit OK again and press Ctrl R. And as you can see, I changed the color of my background. Let me close it and hit Ctrl Shift P. Click on Restore Defaults to reset my background color. And then we have Depth of Field. Using this option, let me enable it. You can set a focus distance for your camera, which is now 2, and also a focus range, which is now 1, so that layers in that range can be clearly seen and the layers out of this range are going to be blurred. 
and using max blur radius, you're going to tell them oh, how much you want to blur them. Let me click on OK. Using one of these four options, you can separate your workspace into multiple views. So you can look at your layers from different directions. Let me choose this one. Right now a gray rectangle is around this view on the left, which means that this view is now selected. And if I right click on this one, I can select this one instead. Because as soon as I clicked here, that rectangle on the left disappeared. And now I have another one on the right. By selecting views like this and going to view. From here, direction, you can choose different directions to look at your layers. By default, you're looking at your layers from the camera point of view. So now I want to choose right to look at my layers from the right side. And as you can see, this is my camera on the left. Then I have a star in the middle and my magic ball on the right. And because my star layer is selected, if I choose transform layer tool, I can see the value of Z and right now it's zero. And also to see the position of my camera, I can click on here. And by default, the Z value of the position of my camera is this, which means that the distance between my star and my camera is this value. So once again, I'm going to hit Control Shift P to show you that my focus distance is now 2 and my focus range is now 1, which means that I only can clearly see those layers that are 3 units away from my camera. On the other hand, as I said, my star is more than 3 units away from my camera. So if I right click on this view and hit Control R, you can see that while my magic ball is completely out of the focus range and totally blurred, I can see my star clearly, but it's also a little bit blurred. To make my star clear, I can close this window, copy this value, hold down the control and press C, and then I can click on somewhere, press Ctrl Shift P to open my project settings, and then I click on here and press Ctrl V, and then I click on OK. Now, if I right click on this view and press Ctrl R, I can see my star very clear. And because I increased the focus distance, I can see my magic ball more clear as well. Let me close this window. When using depth of field, you can actually increase your focus range so you can see multiple layers clearly. To do this, I'm going to hit Ctrl Shift P. And because my magic ball is 2.75 away from my star, I can type 3 for example to have my magic ball in my focus range. And now if I click on OK, right click on this view and hold down the control and press R, I can see both of these shapes clearly. Let me close it and hit Ctrl Shift P to open my project settings. Now I'm going to type 1 here and click on OK. As you know, if I hit Ctrl R, because my focus range is now 1, this magic ball is blurred. To increase this blurriness, I can close this window, press Ctrl Shift P and increase this value. Let me type 30 for example and choose OK. Now if I right click on this view and press Ctrl R, you can see that the blurriness has been increased. Let me close it, press Ctrl Shift P to open my project settings again. Then we have render style. Right now because all of these options are normal, Moho only applies these tiles and effects that you set in the style window. But after applying those, you can also apply a style to every field that you have, or every stroke that you have, or to each layer. When you apply some of these styles, they're gonna be animated through your animation. Other styles can't be animated. And if you want to use those styles that can be animated and you don't want to animate them, you can check minimize frame to frame randomness. Also, every time you apply one of these styles to your project, they will also be applied to this image down here. So you can have a preview of this style before you use it in your render. Now we're going to go through every style and talk about what they do. I'm going to begin with fill style. Normal is when you haven't applied any style yet. Using none, you can make every fill that you applied in a style window invisible. Using background, if the fill of a shape is in front of the stroke of another shape, the part of that stroke that is at the back of that fill will be invisible. Also all of the fills will be invisible. 
Then we have back transparent, which is just like the background style, but instead of completely making the strokes behind the fields invisible, they're gonna be transparent, so you can still see them. Then we have crayon, that makes your fields look like you've drawn them with a crayon. The next style is gonna hatch your shapes instead of filling them. And pen style makes your fields look like you've drawn them using a pencil. Let's talk about stroke styles. If you use none, every stroke that you've applied using the style window will be invisible. And basic black makes the colors of your stroke black, no matter what color they are. Sketchy style will add a sketchy effect to your strokes. Crayon will add a crayon effect to your strokes. Pen style will change the width of your strokes. So all of the strokes will have the same width, no matter what their actual width is. And chalk makes your strokes white and will add noise to them as if you're drawing them using a chalk. For the layer style, we have heavy outline that adds a black stroke to each layer even if a layer has a stroke, it's gonna add another stroke around it. And then we have cut out. This is one of the oldest techniques to make an animation. Animators used to use scissors to cut their drawings. Then they connected those pieces of papers to each other and rotated them to animate them. So to simulate this, Moho will add a drop shadow effect to every layer as if there are some pieces of cardboard or paper. Next we have sort layers by depth. Let me click on cancel and choose one view. And right now, the Z value of the position of my star is zero. And the Z value of the position of my magic ball is minus 2.75, which as I said, means that the star is closer to us. If I move my magic ball to the top of my star layer and click on a frame zero, because I don't want to create an animation and move my magic ball to the front of my star, you can see that while the Z value of my magic ball is less than my star, I still can see it in front of my star. It's because the layer of it is at the top of my star. In Moho, no matter what your depth is, if a layer is on top of another, it's gonna be shown on that layer. It's a little bit weird, but if you click on here, and drag a little bit to have all of the shapes in 3D space. You can drag your view and see that your magic ball is far from your camera. But even in this view, if your magic ball covers a part of your star, because in the layers window, the magic ball is on top of a star, we can see it on the star. Let me reset my view. And to change the order of your layers based on the Z value of the position of them, which means the depth of them, you can hit Ctrl Shift P and check this option. Now, if I click on OK, I click on here, but you look here, OK? See? It's going to change the order of your layers based on the value of Z of their positions. And now, if I want to change this value, you look here, OK? And because the Z value of the magic ball is more than the star, it's going to bring the layer of the magic ball to the top of the star layer. Let me hit Ctrl Shift P. And another interesting thing is that when you check sort layers by depth, you can't change the order of your layers by yourself. See? It's not going to work. So Moho forced the layers to be in this order. Let me hit Ctrl Shift P. And it's time to talk about sort by true distance. This option is for when you have a 3D shape. I'll talk about how you can draw 3D shapes in Moho later in the next seasons. But for now, let's draw a simple cube in Moho to see what this checkbox does. So I'm gonna click on OK, turn off these visibilities and create a new layer and change its name to layer one. Then I press Ctrl G to enable my grid. If you have a problem with your grid or don't know how to use it, I already have a video about it. It's in this playlist and you can go and watch it. So to draw a cube, I'm gonna hit the S key to select the draw shape tool. Then I'm gonna drag from somewhere around here to here. Then I hit the Q 
select it, choose a red color for it. Then I hit the T key and type 0 here to move it to the center. Then I hold down the control and drag to check the position of this point. I want the X value of these positions to be minus 1. So I hold down the control and select both of them and move them to the left. It's OK. Let's do the same to the other side. It's 1 now. So now the coordinates of the points of my shape are something like this. See? So I have a square and every cube has actually six squares. So we can use duplicate to create other faces of it. And now that we have six faces, it's time to set the position and rotation of them. First, I'm going to select this layer. This is our front face. So we can type one here for the Z axis. You should know that the width and the height of every faces in our cube is one. So now let's select layer three. This should be the right face of our object. So I'm going to type one for the X value and press enter. Then using this tool, rotate layer X, Y, I can rotate my layers in 3D space. So now if I type 90 for the Y rotation, I can see that it rotates in depth. And now we've set it for the right side of our cube. Next, I want my layer four to be the left face of my cube. So again, I type 90 here. And for its position, I should type minus one for X value. And then layer five should be the top face of it. So I'm going to type one for the Y value. And then using this tool, I can type 90 to rotate my layer in this axis. And our last layer, layer six, should be the bottom face of our cube. So we type 94 X rotation. Then I hit M to select the transform layer and type minus one to move this layer to the bottom. Let me hit Control G to disable the grid. And one thing is that for the layer two, I have to type minus one for the Z value so I can have it at the back of my cube. That's it, now our cube is ready. And using this tool, you can move your camera by changing its position. So I'm gonna increase this value. And by changing the X value, I can see the size of my cube. Now, if I hit Control Shift P, before render my project, I'm gonna uncheck this option. And then I click on OK. Let me hit Control R. You can see that for this side, it seems we can see inside our cube. To fix this kind of problems, you can close this window, hit Control Shift P to open the project settings and check this checkbox. Sort by true distance. Now, if I click on OK, it changes the order of some layers. And if you render, you can see that the problem is gone. Let me close it and hit Control Shift P. You also can see these two checkboxes when you group some layers. So now let me click on OK, hold down the control and select these six layers, right click on them and choose group with selection, click on that group and type cube. Then I'm going to hit enter to confirm the name and double click on that group. Up here, choose depth sort. So in these kind of cases that you have all of the layers of your cube inside the group, you have to go to layer settings of that group and check these two. Now, if I click on OK, by choosing this option and dragging on my cube, I can easily rotate my cube. And as you can see, there is no problem with the faces. Let me hit the M key, move it to the left and hit Control R. There is no problem with any of them. Also, there is no problem with any of them in your render. OK? Let me hit Control Shift P and it's time to talk about anti-aliasing. Anti-aliasing helps you to have a higher quality when you have vector shapes in your project. If you don't check it, you're going to see the pixels around every shape. Then we have noise grain. If you add noise grain to your project, it adds a noise filter on every image that you render. You may have seen it as an option in the game such as Resident Evil 2 Remake called Film Grain. Sometimes we use it for horror animations 
or sometimes we use it because it makes everything looks more natural. Next we have pixelation. If you are a fan of pixel art and you don't know how to do it, then using pixelation might be helpful for you. It's gonna convert every one of your shapes to a pixelated shape. But you know, sometimes it's not gonna work very well. Because after all, it's computer generated and you won't have that much control over it. You can also apply pixelation to every layer by going to layer settings and then you can find it here. Then we have a stereo rendering. When you want to record a 3D movie, you should use a 3D camera, which has two cameras, one on the right, one on the left. Sometimes they also have another camera in the middle to make the images taken by the right camera and the left camera a single image. And you should know that when you're shooting a film, both of these cameras are looking at one direction, they record images at once, and each one of them record the images for one of your eyes. If you put those two images together, you will have a single image which we called anaglyph. And then you can watch it using a pair of 3D glasses. We actually have different types of 3D glasses. Some of the old ones were red and cyan, but we don't see them nowadays. Instead, we use these glasses or at least something similar to them. So that's what red blue anaglyph means. When using anaglyph, Moho is gonna put two cameras one on the right side of the main camera that we have in Moho and another one on the left side of it and then put their images together to create a 3D animation. But sometimes to upload them on the internet, especially for YouTube, we upload them as totally separated images because after we upload them, YouTube will put them together by itself. So we don't need to do that. So if you want to upload a 3D video on YouTube using side by side or cross eyed will be the best choice. In side by side, the images on the left are recorded by the left camera and the images on the right are recorded by right camera. However, if you use cross-eyed, the images on the left are recorded by the right camera and the images on the right are recorded by the left camera. In reality, the distance between these two cameras is 6 centimeters, but in Moho by default the value of it is 0.02 and we call it eye separation. So if you increase it, you can have more space between your images in 3D format. And 0.02 usually works fine, but if you want, you can change it to whatever you want to achieve the best result. It's good to know that when you use anaglyph, you're not going to see your background color at the back of your shapes, and the background color will be black. But for side by side and cross eyed, you will have the background color that you set in project settings. And the last options of this window are save as defaults and restore defaults. As I said, using this option, you can reset all of these values in the project settings. So let me click on it. And using this option, you can create a default preset for yourself. So every time you create a new document, the project settings of that document will be the values that you've set. For example, if I change my dimensions to 1080p, enable my depth of field and type 30 here and click on save as defaults and then choose OK. The next time you create a new document and go to its project settings, you can see that it creates your project with your preset. By the way, you still can use restore defaults here to change every settings of this window based on Moho defaults. See? That's it guys, thank you so much for watching, if you want to see more tutorials like this don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one.